Good morning and welcome to the Etsy virtual event on boosting the impact of research and innovation through standardization. I'm Guy Daniels and joining me now from Germany is Colin Wilcock, 5G IA board chairman. Colin has 28 years of experience in telecoms and has been very active in the European research ecosystem. He's head of radio network standardization at Nokia in addition to his role as chairman of the board of the 5G Infrastructure Association. Welcome Colin, thank you very much for joining us. Great to be here. Colin, can you give us uh, an introduction to the work of 5G IA and also the success of the 5G PPP? Yes, by all means. So um, maybe to start with who are the 5G IA, uh, what does the association do? So the 5G Infrastructure Association really tries to be a voice for European industry in all things 5G. And when we say industry, it's, it's not just the big players, it's not just the Nokia and the Ericsson and Orange. We also have the SMEs and the academics. So we have the whole sort of ecosystem of participants within the association. And what we try and do, or one of the key things we do is involved in 5G research. So there is a large European research program called 5G PPP, which has been leading Europe's attempts to find leadership in 5G. And this was started in 2013, 2014, has run 60 or 70 projects going right the way through from research to, to proof of concept, working with verticals. So trying to bring 5G technology to European industry. Now, just because we're seeing the first 5G services doesn't mean we've stopped focusing on 5G. Let's be clear, work is still ongoing in Europe on further 5G research. Absolutely. And it's a very good question because there is some confusion. We are beginning to see discussion and hype about 6G. And there seems to be a, a feeling that, well, 5G is all finished and completed and everything. And that's really not true. We're very much at the beginning of the 5G story. So we have the first systems deployed. We have the first demonstrations of using such 5G systems for some of the verticals, some of the non-telecoms domains. But there's still an awful lot of work to do. And there's still an awful lot of evolution of 5G. So the first deployments of 6G will not happen before, well, at earliest 2030. And so in the meantime, we need a technology to meet our requirements for now. And that will be 5G and the evolutions of 5G. And to enable those evolutions is one of the key things that the current 5G PPP program is actually doing. The projects in there are, are working with the key vertical players in automotive, in, in smart networks, in industry 4.0, and trying to understand what are those requirements which those future versions of 5G need to meet. And then working together to try and find compelling services which we can create with those new features. So the 5G story is started, not finished. There is an awful lot of work to do in both research in terms of trials, in terms of standardization, and in terms of deployment to provide full 5G to really meet the promises that were made at the beginning. This, this never happens overnight. It's the same with all cellular technologies. There is a first version, which has the basic functionality, and then we build features on top of that as we go along, as we learn more about what is needed from the key customers. So Colin, given, as you say, that we've still got a lot of work to do on 5G, why do we need to focus now on 6G research? It's all to do with the time span. The cellular technologies are not something that are developed overnight. They need a very long development time. So, so typically we have a new cellular generation every 10 years. And if you, if you look at that and if you think that, that 5G has sort of been first deployed in, in 2020, then in 2030, typically we would then have that new next generation. And if you work back from that, then around now is the time to start thinking, having initial thoughts about 6G research. But this, this isn't about standardization. This isn't about developing products or anything like that. It's trying to understand what would be the requirements for a 6G system? What are we, what, what would be the key technology building blocks? And really having fundamental research, trying to understand 
those fundamental building blocks and what would be the best solution. So it's very, very early days. Apart from the name, we have very little in terms of 6G today. And, and, and of course, the danger, as said before, is that with all this talk and hype about 6G, we will forget about 5G. And 5G is that technology we are currently using. We need to keep on developing that in terms of research, in terms of proof of concept, in terms of, of deployment. And that will be the main story in terms of actually solving problems in, in the next 10 years. It will be 5G, not 6G. Indeed. Now, sticking with, with the, the 6G concept for a moment, though, um, do we yet have future plans for how we go about and organise 6G research in Europe? Yes. So uh, one of the good things I think we can claim from, from Europe, and there are many detractors from, from Europe and uh, saying things are not done properly at that level, but one of the success stories, in my view, is what we have done with 5G. So I talked about the 5G PPP programme before, and that partnership was started early enough that it had a real impact. So this starting early with significant funding has meant that much of the fundamental research for 5G has happened in Europe. And that's been a real success, something like 800 contributions to standardization to places like 3GPP, 1600 papers. And, and very much the focus of where that pre-standardization consensus has happened. And that is also the hope for 6G. So uh, the 5GIA together with other associations has been in discussion with the European Commission. And we now have a proposal for a new program called Smart Networks and Services. And this Smart Networks and Services will concentrate on two things. One of them is, as we've just described, trying to continue that development and deployment of 5G. So that will be one strand. But the second strand then is to do this fundamental 6G research, build those foundations for the next generation of cellular technology. So can you tell us a little bit more about um, how 5G IA may evolve as you head towards 6G and also the, the SNS, how, how will it help to secure European leadership in the development and deployment of next generation network and technologies and services, whilst also you know, looking and helping to accelerate European industry digitization? Yes, uh, in terms of the 5G IA, the point is that the smart networks and services isn't just uh, the, the existing program plus plus. So it's not just exactly the same as we did in 5G, we're going to do in 6G. And the aspect here is that the scope needs to be broader. We're all aware of these dis different digital technologies coming together. Well, 6G is where it happens. And that means that we need to look beyond purely the telecoms. We need to consider things like AI, cloud, security, uh, energy efficiency. There's a series of, 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 of aspects there which are much broader than what we have actually done in an existing program. And that means that as the organization that will be responsible from the private side, the 5G Inf Infrastructure Association also needs to evolve. So we need to evolve to have a broader membership. We need to make sure that we have representation from the IoT community, from the cloud community, from the verticals community as well, because clearly in 6G, verticals will also be central to the success of that technology. So moving forward, a larger community base to make sure that the opinion of the association is the opinion of European industry on 6G. In terms of the Smart Networks and Services um, partnership, we will be having uh, a series of, of, of different phases. We will start with a phase where, again, we will uh, work with the key players to develop those fundamental technology blocks. So we have projects at the end of 5GPP, the so-called ICT52 projects, which are having a first look at beyond 5G. And hopefully they will set the, the, the roadmap, the big picture in regards to 6G. And once we have that big picture, we should then know what are these fundamental 6G technologies we need to look at. And then within the smart networks and services, those will be the first focus, 
trying to work on those, trying to have a collaborative environment so that we have the, all the big players involved so that the results coming out of these projects will be a clear signpost towards what 6G will become and what 6G technology will be standardised. And how closely are you working with Etsy and industry? And is there a way forward for future cooperation? Etsy clearly is one of the most important partners for the 5G industry association in, in, in terms of standardisation. So much of what we are doing in terms of what come the output of our projects needs to be driven into standardization. And, and the, the, one of the key issues here is that many of the telecoms players, they understand standardization and 3GPP and things like this. But we're now, as we're saying, trying to expand both in 5G and, and certainly in 6G, the use of these cellular technologies beyond the telecoms domain and into these other areas, automotive, industry 4.0, smart cities. And this is where um, knowledge of how standardization work, advice on standardization, workshops on how to actually get involved. This is where that is so vital. So we are about to sign an MOU with Etsy, which will cover the existing work in terms of 5G, but also look forward to 6G, that we can closer work together to make sure that we can better provide standardization intelligence to the partners in the project and within the association. The association is already um, part of the overall 3GPP. We are uh, um, a industry representative organization, so we are involved in that standardization from there. And we are also a player in the Indico project, which is a project led by Etsy, trying to drive global standardization, trying to make sure that we have the same standards across the world, because that is in everyone's interest. That is one of the key value propositions of cellular technologies. Wherever I go in the world, I turn my mobile phone on, I get a signal, I'm able to talk, I'm able to use the services. And that is something clearly, with the, certainly with a European hat on, we would not wish to see changed. And so we are investing effort trying to help bring that global standards to fruition. Great. Well, thank you very much, Colin. And we'll be speaking with you again later today during our panel session. Over the next two days, we have a full agenda of presentations, panel discussions and interviews. Details and timings are on the website. And if you miss anything, don't worry, it's all available to watch later on demand. Plus, we're taking your questions during a live Q&A session at the end of each day, and you can submit your questions now. No need to wait until the programme begins. Stay with us for our next session, an interview with Rui Aguiar, Steering Board Chairman of NetWorld 2020 on creating future networks. But goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.